Welcome to my channel. My name is Kendra Luebuga, and the purpose of this channel is to provide you with inspiration and ideas for your own watercolor projects. Today I want to show, share with you some new tools that I've brought into my studio recently. I have some new Neocolor 2 crayons from Carandash and some new Inktense pencils from Derwent. And I, today I was looking at how can I mix and match these new tools with my regular watercolor palette. And I decided to test it out with the hellebore flower because we've been seeing the hellebores blooming all over our walk in Portland, Oregon. My husband and I go for a walk every day. And so we've been watching the hellebores bloom and seed. And I think around now they're getting ready to almost lose their petals. So, Let's get into it. Hi, so here we are at my desk. And first I wanted to show you what I did to prepare for my new Neo Colors to arrive in the mail. I did not buy a kit, so I had to think of where I was going to store them. And so, being the sort of uh, little bit of a pack rat that I am, I had these cute boxes. I don't know if you can recognize these boxes. Here's a clue. There's an O-N-E as part of the word. <laughs> these are such great boxes. They are made so well. and. I always keep them. So these are from super old versions of the product that was originally in them. Um, and I decided I could use two, one for warm colors and one for cooler colors, or I could just generally do half and half. So it works out pretty well. And I just use some contact paper, some stickers in order to um, cover over the rough parts when I tore out the the pieces that were stuck into here. So these came pretty well. Some of them came broken and I let the I let Blick know and they sent me a new one. Um, like so for instance this one came this one came broken. Oh and then they sent me a different color on that one by mistake again. But this one came broken here and um, these break really easily as it turns out but they sent me another one just because if you buy a new crayon it should come fully formed and not broken so anyway i love these little boxes because i can easily keep these crayons um, neat where they're supposed to be and then for my new um for my ink tents um derwent ink tents pencils i made a pencil roll and i shared about how i made this on a previous video um, it's just a simplest art roll, pencil roll that you could do. And so now I have them all organized. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, black, and a white one. And these are just my intense pencils. And so anyway, this turns out to be quite a handy little way to store them because they roll up nicely. I can stick it in my backpack if I want to go out and do some plain air and then I didn't even put a closure on this one. I just wrap up the bias tape like so, and it stays really nicely put together. So here's what I was working on this week. And I started in, I've been a busy bee. I started in a sketchbook that I made. This has a Coptic um, sewn binding which I found out how to do that from Sea Lemon, and I'm gonna link her um, video below. She did a really good job. Um, this is my first one, so there's some deficiencies in it, but it holds together. And I just used the back of a watercolor block to make the cover. And in this one, I used Hot Press, which is a watercolor paper that is smooth. So the cold press has a little bit of a bumps to it and the hot press is smooth. And I had bought a block of hot press some time ago thinking that I'd like to try it out. And I haven't had much happiness coming from hot press. It, it's flat and it wrinkles a bit, um, which I suppose you can, you can get the wrinkles out as long as you don't have something on the other side. Um, 
But I started to test out some of my existing um, colors. I had some Caran d'Ache um, watercolor pencils, so I started to do that. And then when my materials came, I decided to try it out on this hot press paper. So this is the Neocolor 2 pencils. Um, and I just tried mixing and matching and I liked the textures that I could get. And then when I applied color, I got this really soft effect, especially if I'd only done the outline of the hellebore flower. Then I got this really soft effect. If I colored it in more, I got a really kind of darker, I think kind of a gloppier effect. I kind of rather prefer this soft effect that I got. And then on this side, I decided to start to define the edges of the plants by going in with pen. And I use these, um, on this one, it's this Unipen Fine Line, because this won't um, run if it, if it hits water. If water touches it, it won't run. So I use the 0.7 with my uh, cold press paper, but the 0.5 works just fine with my hot press paper. And I started to try to figure out what is it about the hellebore flower that excites me. It's really a tangled mess of a bush of flowers. But what I really like are these parts down here where the flower is hanging down and one petal is hanging over the top of the rest and it's dark on the bottom and light on the top because of course the daylight is hitting the top of the flower. I really kind of like these parts and the new buds. So this one and this one I really like and I really liked where the leaves kind of bunched up like that. Um, and the more I made stems, a yellow color, which isn't how they really exist, but the more I made them a yellow color, the more I enjoyed my drawings and paintings. So this is where I started. And then, and then I started to go a little bit crazy with doing all kinds of trials. So let's just go down these one by one. In this trial, Let's do this so that there's a little less shadow. On this trial, what I did is I first painted with regular watercolors without drawing a line. And I've been using these colors, which are, I guess I should show, these colors are, da, 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 da. I think they're all Winsor Newton colors and it's Quinn Rose, Prussian Blue, Quinn Magenta, and Ultramarine Pink. And none of them are painted in their original colors. They're all mixed. So here you can see Prussian Blue and Quinn Magenta mixed to make this beautiful purple color. And the Prussian Blue with the Quinn Rose, another beautiful sort of violety, warm purple. Same thing here, Quinn Rose, Ultramarine Pink. Ugh, love that color. And then these two, Ultramarine Pink and Quinacridone Magenta, another lovely color. So I was doing this. If I cover these up, I really like the colors that are here. Oh, and Quinacridone Magenta plus Quinacridone Rose gives us this very deep rosy red. So those are the colors on this little palette, this little yogurt lid forager cashew milk yogurt lid that I was using so so that's how I started with this painting with just the watercolor paints and um, this one also I've used um, just um, cerulean blue and new gamboge and Quinn um, Quinn 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 the yellow Quinn Quinacridone Gold, Quin Gold. So, so that was the first lay. And then after I put all of that color down, I wanted to pop up something about it. So I used the Derwent Inktense pencils to start to draw these lines. And then of course these pencils will activate in water. So after I would painted it, now I have no worries about it reactivating now because it's already been activated. So I just went over it like this and gave that little slip of a 
of an area a little bit of color and then I liked the effect of these different colors you can see it and then I decided to do the same with the leaves only I didn't want to bring reality to the leaf I wanted to make the leaf an unrealistic situation where the stem or the the veins of the leaf would come out not directly from the the main vein um, which gives it a little bit of a sort of Dr. Seuss feel. So I like that. And then afterwards I used the ink tense pencils to lay down this very, very dark background. And of course this was taped. This was taped with the, um, the, the Yupo, no, not Yupo, what's this called? <laughs> with this tape. Um, so I like that. And then the next thing I tried, one of the next things I tried is, this is a little scrap of, and now this is a 156 pound cold press watercolor paper that I get from a big roll. And this I tried with just using um, pen and ink, again the Unipen, starting with that and then laying down different things. I think I used the Neo Colors because it has such a such a thick, it kind of looks like gouache. That's how it made me feel when I was painting with the Neo Colors because there's so much sort of chalky content in there that my swish water turned very chalky white um, when I was swishing out my water. So, so there's a trial that again, oh no, it doesn't again, it's, it uses the ink to make the outlines and um, trying to, you know, overlap, doing these overlaps with the, with the, um, with the leaves and with the, with the stems and the petals, trying to overlap things to get that look. So I thought this was fun for a bookmark. And then, oh, I tried one here, which I think isn't finished yet, but this is something that I'm trying to do with just, trying to start with just the paint. Um, trying to draw with paint, which I've heard is something that some of artists really do really well with. Um, but I have a hard time. I like to draw my outline in a pencil or something. Um, so here we have those seeds that are starting to show up in the hellebore flowers um, towards the sort of end of their flowering period. They make these huge seeds that are really neat. So again, another sort of bookmark size and a tiny little bookmark thing. This one's also with the Neo Color 2s, I can tell for sure, because it has that chalky sort of gouache look. Um, but unlike gouache, you can sort of make um, pencil mark, pencil type marks with them. And also there might have been a little bit of, in fact, one thing that I do is I make sure to keep sharpening these you can pull off one little strip of paper at a time. You see each of these arrows has a little um, thing that you can grab at and you can pull off a little bit of the paper, which is kind of handy. And then you just use your big, the big hole in your sharpener in order to get it sharp. So I keep the pencil pretty sharp so that I can make these lines. Oh yeah, that's the same color and the same pencil, which are the lines that are in this plant. So I rather liked how this little thing turned out and I'm still debating if I should make the black, the background dark or black. I think I will, I like that. And then, let's see here. Oh, then here's a trial where I used some ink tents and some Neo Colors. This background is Neo Color, and it's the Umber, which interestingly enough, this Umber, in fact, I'm a little ashamed to admit, but I ordered raw Umber, and it came Umber, and I thought, oh, they must have made a mistake and just thrown in Umber when I asked for raw Umber, which I thought would have been a lighter color. And so I told Blick, oh, you made a mistake, and you know, you should send me the raw Umber, well, they sent me <laughs> umber again. So they sent me a number, so now I have two umbers. So then 
then I took the time to go and look on their website to see like, well, do I have to go to the store to find raw umber? Well, turns out they only have umber, but you can, they only actually have umber, but you can only buy raw umber. Does that make sense? So they only have raw umber, but actually what comes is this one that just says umber on it. So now I have two umbers and, um, and Blick has done me a solid by giving me an extra Neo Color pencil. Anyway, that color combined with a really nice brownish, brownish green color, olive, not olive, olive brown. This olive brown color mixed with umber is what I used to make this background. And then I didn't use much water so that I could still see the grainy texture um, where it hit the top ridges of this of this cold press paper. So this is really interesting because I rather like this and it's very different to this one that I did with the ink tense pencils where it's a lot smoother and more solid, which I think works for this one. But this one kind of has a different sketchy quality. And again, I used the, the um, pencil, the pen. And this one I used the 0.5 because I can see that the line is really struggling to show up. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I was trying to figure out how to get really some good lightness on the little, on the little, oh, I don't even know what these are called. The little pieces that come out from the, from the flower where they're going to make the seeds. Um, I wish I could get a better lightness into this or to preserve a little bit more of the lightness of the paper, which I'll try on another trial. And then, right. Then I have this big one that I'm still working on. Well, it's 12 by seven or eight. And I've tried a few different things on this one. I've used watercolor, just regular watercolor from my little palette here. And I've dipped it in different colors to make a different texture. Um, I did that for these petals as well, but then I went over them this morning with the Neo Color pencils, like these kind of pencils. And I went over that really well with water so that it gives it this more solid and stable appearance. You know, this, this painting is interesting to me because the most interesting part of the flower for me is this flower down here where it is hanging down. Um, and up here I have that flower that's open to me and another one that's sort of hanging below and under it. This is really a lesson in trying to figure out your composition. But for today, I was just playing. I was just trying to find what really turns me on about these flowers and about these kinds of colors. And then I want to show you, I did a little trial on black paper. And this is, this turned out really interesting. So no water on this one. This is just Neo Colors. And I'm really intrigued by the effects that can happen on black paper with Neo Colors. And this is a photograph we took last week where these seeds are getting really big. The seeds inside of the inside of the petals have suddenly gotten big. And this one's at a little bit of a different stage. You see how those seeds are still a little bit small. I love watching the changes. We watch it on our walk. Every day we walk by these and um, examine them and take a few pictures of them. Um, again, on the background here, I used the umber and this, um, what did I call it? Dark olive, olive brown, and then a little bit of black over the top of it just to give it a little bit more texture. Not sure if you can see it on the camera. But I'm really kind of pleased um, on this rather dark and moody um, drawing. Um, I was able to really observe the flower and to really um, push forward and backward the lights and darks using those Neo Colors. So it gave me a good, it would have been a good maybe preliminary study to a watercolor painting because it's more forgiving when you can go back and forward with your lights and darks instead of with watercolor where you really, 
you can lift out to some extent, but for the most part, you want to know where your light colors are going to be so that you can preserve that on the paper. And then finally, the last thing to show you, well, before a little bit of swatching that I want to show you, is these in progress little six by sixes that I have going. And these are, three of them are started with plain old watercolor. And I think some of my lines here are the ink tents, the Derwent ink tents pencils. So here I've started to zone in on the kind of the part of the plant that I really like. And I'm going in light and I'm gonna be bumping up all of those darker values as I go along. And I think what I'll do, I think I'll share these on Instagram when they're all done. Here, I really, really like this um, variation in the green on the leaf. And I just achieved that by just picking up different pigments on this little palette so that it's slightly different, but all in the same family. And then this one isn't watercolor, but I think by now you can guess what it is. It's the Neo Color 2 pencils. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about this yet, but it's really just only begun. And I think that I can play around with it and push those colors in and out and see what happens. But like I said, these Neo Color 2s, they're a lot of fun. They also remind me so much of painting with straight up gouache um, because it has that opaque, fully covering um, aspect. So, one last thing before I sign off for today is this beautiful watercolor book. This is the second one that I made. Again, C. Lemon taught me how to do the Coptic binding. And I saw on Instagram this really great idea of separating the signatures with pretty paper. So, so I put in some pretty papers that I had to separate the signatures. This is the swatching that I did on the Neo Colors when they first came so that I could really see what their color is once they have been touched by water. And then the Ink Tense pencils, I swatched those when they came in. So now this is the group I have plus, plus a few more earth tones on this side. I feel like it would be really fun to pick out some that I love, like this one, this one, and this one, and then put them on their own page and sort of see them together. And then this is some swatching like I showed you right before of my watercolor palette. And then this is how those, those signature papers look in the middle of the book. It's really kind of fun. I did this because I wanted to have a watercolor book that had really high quality watercolor paper, really thick watercolor paper. And um, I just really like the idea of having a smaller watercolor sketchbook that's made to the size that I really wanted. And also I love how it opens up very flat and then if it doesn't open up super flat because it hasn't been used like this, I just use this, this twill tape that I used to open it. I bunch it up over the side and I use my little clip binder and the weight of the binder kind of holds it down and this keeps it from getting um, bruised, bruising the paper. So that worked out quite well and this is what I discovered after applying the twill tape to to, to make my closure. All right, this is it for today in terms of the talking part. I think I'll play some music and show you some of the process on some of these, some of these works that I was doing today or this week. And that's it for today. Oh, I'm so grateful that you've come to look and see and get ideas. And I hope you found something that you will use in your own watercolor practice. All right, thank you, bye.